Now, compared to Korea's other FTA partners, New Zealand is a smaller market, but President Park is touting the trade deal as a milestone in bilateral relations, perhaps because of the economic benefits to Korea. Our Shin Se-min tells us more. Trade volume between Korea and New Zealand reached 3.2 billion U.S. dollars last year, up from 2.8 billion in 2013. And the latest FTA is expected to increase those figures. Korea will eliminate tariffs on 96 percent of all goods from New Zealand within the next 15 years, while New Zealand will remove tariffs on all Korean goods within seven years. Demand is expected to grow for Korean small electronic goods, auto parts and heavy equipment as these will enter the market with no to low tariffs. In Korea, New Zealand's kiwi fruit, wine, beef and dairy are popular imports. The pact will swap more than just products. It'll also open doors to Korean youth employment in New Zealand and easier exchange of agricultural technologies and expertise. New Zealand's Zespri has already helped Jeju Island kiwi farmers. This year, Jeju Island kiwi made it into the Singaporean market for the first time, contributing to the regional economy. And Korean companies are also making headway into New Zealand with an ICT company that manufactures a smart card for transportation. But Koreans in the dairy and livestock industry have voiced concerns over an expected increase in competition for domestic products like cheese, milk and beef. Korea's Rural Economic Institute has projected over 2 trillion won or 1.8 billion U.S. dollars worth of domestic losses. But some experts advise patience. This is part of improving our competitiveness in the long run by giving a wider selection to consumers. Lowering trade barriers is only one part of the FTA's benefits. Although New Zealand isn't a large exporting partner, experts say the FTA will generate mutual economic benefits. Shin Se-min, Arirang News.